Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Um, update on the 66 Nova we've been working on. Uh, finally got the body in paint. Um, body's clear coated and I finished doing the chrome foil on the body as well. Um, still got a few small things to do on the body. I've got to do Molotow on the door handle, door lock. I think I'm going to Molotow the little handle on the gas cap on the side. Um, the foiling turned out pretty good in this car. Um, the um, still haven't made up my mind whether I'm going to foil the uh, lower uh, part of the quarter uh, along the rocker and the front edge of the fender. And as mentioned before, I'm going to wait till the model's uh, pretty much done with wheels on and everything assembled, and see how it looks. And I may may add uh, chrome foil to the um, the quarter, the rockers, and the um, and the front edge of the fender. I don't think I'm going to use the chrome that came with the kit. It's too thick and clunky looking. So what we may, if we're going to chrome that, we'll just use chrome foil on that lower section along there. We'll again see what it looks like when it's all assembled. Um, when I do my chrome foil, uh, I'm not going to do a a video of you go for you guys watching me tediously do my chrome foiling but uh, just some things that seem to work for me over the over the years in doing chrome foil is um, number one is get yourself a good blade and what I use are these um, number 11 surgical blades um, I buy them off of uh, eBay you can get a package of uh, 10 blades and as I again I say they're a number 11 blade they've got a real nice sharp point to them and when you buy them on eBay you get 10 blades and a little handle for them for about a buck 30 buck and a half for a set and I don't use the handles that come with them I throw those in the garbage and I just use the blades now the blades won't fit a standard exacto knife so what I do is I cut off the base of it, the wide part, and then insert it in the handle of the um, of the X-Acto knife. Uh, you can also, if you're stuck and if you can't cut them off yourself, if you don't have the means to do that, you can use the larger uh, X-Acto knife, and they'll just uh, sit in there as long as you position them right. Hang on. like a boat so and leave them crooked because you're going to be pushing down on it with force so you want to cock it a little bit to one side and then oh, not cut your finger tighten it up come on cooperate and you can use it with the uh, larger handle one if you don't have the means to cut them off but I've got some shears that I use to to cut those off and, uh, and of course that's the only thing I use this knife for that's why I put the tape on it because I know it's my it's my chrome foil knife and these blades are believe it or not um, even thinner than the exacto blades that you buy uh, with the exacto knives and the refills that they come with they're a lot thinner than the standard standard blades you get in these little packs um, and they seem to be a whole lot sharper too sometimes the quality of these blades is not very good but anyway even name brand ones versus no name brands um, I find sometimes it's a hit and a miss and if when you're doing chrome foiling you want a crisp clean edge um, the other thing that I do is when I'm doing my chrome foiling especially when I get to complicated things like down along the wipers in this lower molding on the windshield. Um, I don't cut my sheets in great big sheets to cover that whole thing. Uh, the front molding around the window uh, here is done in actually four pieces, one on the top and the bottom, and then one up each side. And the foil is so thin that you, unless you look really hard you can see the joint in it. But what I do do when I get into complicated cuts 
along this uh, along this front lower windshield with the wipers. I'll start at one end and I'll cut that continuous all around the wipers back and forth um, but I don't lift the knife off the model. I make it in one continuous cut so when I'm running along the model with my knife I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to turn and I keep the knife where it is and I pivot the knife make my turn then continue on and when I get down to the end of the wiper arm here I'll slowly pull it and give it a little bit of a cut turn the model pull it a little bit more give it a cut turn it and even if you have to reposition it with your hands I never let the blade leave the model so that cut from one side of the A pillar to the other side is all one continuous cut and then I just take it off with one big one big piece the scrap anyway that's work but that's what works for me uh, the other must have when you're doing uh, chrome foiling is these um, eyelash makeup um, we're gonna call them q-tips but they call also refer them to them as buds and these particular ones I buy off of eBay and they've got a pointed end on one end and a rounded end on the other end and I use that for when I go to put my main piece of foil on there is I'll use that to get it pressed down on the a high point that I want to save that's going to remain on the car and then what I do is I use these little guys and they are from they're pointed at both ends and they're the same idea but they're made from I bought those from uh, Mr. Hobby and you get a pack of I think it's 50 of them I think pretty sure it's a pack of 50 for about six six and a half bucks off of eBay and they're made for, uh, by Mr. Hobby and they're GT69 that's the number they go by um, these are a must-have um, when I used to start doing uh, chrome foiling and foiling on my models I used to use a toothpick but I find a toothpick is um, is great for getting into the little you know cracks and crevices but um, you still run the danger that you're gonna rip the foil so if you're gonna be doing foiling I'd recommend you guys pick up some of these um, Mr. Hobby little buds um, they're pointed at each end and that's that GT69 so that's a must-have and oh one thing to steer away from are these stupid things Q-tips. Um, unless you like getting all these little fuzzy things stuck all over your model, they just disintegrate and get caught on the chrome foil and just make you get little floaty hairs on every freaking thing. So the only thing I use these for is sticking in my ears. Um, the other thing these things are good for is if you're painting a model and you get a little get a little sloppy and you go oops and I got some paint in the wrong spot these are good to um, to soak up some of the paint and try and correct your mistake uh, while you're painting so it's got multi-use these little things there must have these little buds um, you typically will get about well, 100 of these in a package and I think they run me about two dollars and seventy five cents <coughs> excuse me on eBay and they're a must-have. Uh, they're good for cleaning um, my airbrush as well when I'm changing colors and cleaning out uh, paint out of it because as the um, the danger always is with your airbrush is you get foreign material in there and these things aren't very good because you have the danger that you leave little fuzzies in your airbrush so other than stick them in your ears that's all I use those for. Um, what else have we got? Um, yeah, covered blades, covered the little uh, Q-tips from uh, Mr. Hobby, and the cotton buds for, they sell these for doing uh, eye makeup and uh, eyelash stuff for women. They're, they're great. Um, same thing when I do the emblems on the side of the fender and the quarter panel. Um, when I lay my foil down, I watch where I start and remember where I start and that's one continuous cut all around same thing I cut it along turn the model hold the knife it never leaves the car um, I make my I hold my knife in one position and uh, and move the model to cut around it 
and just handle it in different ways. And if you, as I say, if you got to change your 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 hand position because you're getting cramped or you can't make that turn where you're holding it, is re keep the knife on there, reposition the model with your hands, and give it a twist around to make your uh, one continuous cut. Then you don't have to remember, oh, where did I leave off? And it turns out a whole lot better. Um, I still want to put some uh, dull coat on the front and rear emblems on both sides. Um, I think the dull coat will cut the shine down a little bit, and I've got some other colors to represent the um, emblems on the uh, front fenders. I think they're uh, red, white, and blue, and a checker flag on the right-hand side, and it's red and red and blue on the left flag. I'll have to look at the internet again to see what it is, but we got a bit of got a dull coat to do there, and uh, and do a little bit of coloring in there, and uh, get those tidied up. So I've got to do Molotow on the door handle and door lock. Um, but other than that, body's ready to go. Uh, inside's painted up. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, motors in chassis. <coughs> Sorry guys. Um, it went together good. And it looks like we still have hood clearance. Um, got my heater hose running to the firewall. And I've got my hose clamps glued in place. Uh, got our brake baster cylinder in there and then the brake booster wires hooked up to it. Got a couple of brake lines running down from there. Um, hose clamps, we've still got my two in place on the upper and the lower. So when I put my rad support and rad in there, we can, we can slide those down and get those glued on. <coughs> uh, what else have we got? Uh, front grill headlights are in. Use the Tamiya yellow on the uh, turn signals. Black wash the grill so it's prepped and ready to go. Got a bit of Molotow to touch up on the bottom. Same as the rear bumper. Uh, it's ready to go. I just have to touch those up with Molotow as well. Rad support uh, is painted up. Got a little regulator on the f on the uh, rad support drilled a hole in it through the other side and that's where our alternator wire is going to run up to and then go through and I'll snip it off there at the back side when that gets glued into place. Uh, mufflers got uh, mufflers ready to go. We still have to run exhaust to the back of the car from the headers and tailpipes on it. Got to glue my battery in place. It's going to go in the engine compartment probably on the right hand inner fender when we get to that stage. <clears throat> um, still got the rear chrome to put on the deck lid in the back. Uh, tail lights are detailed up. Um, wheels are going to go on last. Um, I haven't even I haven't even painted up the rear leaf springs or the differential yet because I got to do some modifications to those to get things to fit in place and I'll get a better idea once the interior and chassis and body are all assembled. Now I'll get a better idea of um, <clears throat> of uh, how that's going to come together, what my clearances are going to be, and stands for the car again. Uh, front wheels are set, um, and I'll uh, I'll set the back um, set the back up once I uh, get it assembled and the front wheels on it, and, uh, and then get a better idea of the stance that I want and what other modifications I need to do the rear suspension. Um, other than that, we're kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, I hope. Um, still got some wheels coming from Steve Zimmerman. Uh, ordered some motors from uh, Clearly Scale. And um, got some rims and tires coming from um, Germany from uh, Scale uh, Production, too. I want to try some of, their, some of their wheels on a couple of products that I've got, or, mo or uh, models and, that I've got in my stash. But we're kind of coming to the end of this one, boys, and I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update on where we stand on it, and uh, that's about it. And as usual, uh, thanks for staying tuned, and we'll talk to you soon. See ya.